Right. It comes from cows. And today, Judy and her mother are going to visit Uncle George's farm to see just how we get the milk from the cows. Uncle George's farm is out in the country where there's plenty of sweet green grass for the cows to eat. There they are, grazing in the meadow. Brown cows, black cows, white cows, spotted cows, all kinds of cows, and they're always eating, eating and drinking all the time. This is very important because the more grass they eat and the more water they drink, the more milk they'll give. To make sure that they drink enough water, Uncle George puts a large block of salt in the field where the cows can lick it with their long, rough tongues. Cows love to eat salt. The salt makes them thirsty. And then they drink gallons and gallons of water. Judy seems to be excited about something. I wonder what she sees. Why, it's a little calf. A baby cow only one day old, drinking milk from her mother. She's still stand up by herself, so the farmer holds her while she's feeding. A baby calf is too young to eat grass. She can only drink milk, and the milk comes from the cow's udder, that round white sack under her stomach. That's where we get our milk, too, as you'll see a little later. Here is a big white barn where the cows are milked. That tall round tower attached to the side of the barn is called a silo. The silo is used for storing corn to feed the cows in the winter when the ground is covered with snow. The farmer grows his own corn and when it's ripe, he picks it and stores it in the silo. The silo holds enough corn to feed all the cows in the winter. Inside the barn are the stalls where the cows are kept while they're being milked. Each stall has a soft bed of straw, and in front of the stall is a feed trough where the farmer puts hay for the cows to eat while they're in the barn. The hay grows in a large open field. And here we see Uncle George cutting the hay with his mowing machine, which is something like a big lawnmower pulled by a team of mules. The name of the mules are Katie and Bob, and they're very patient and work very hard. After the hay is cut, Katie and Bob are hitched to the hay rake, which piles the hay in long bundles in the field. A pitchfork helps, too. This is the hay loader. It picks up the hay in its iron fingers and dumps it on the wagon. When the wagon is full, Uncle George drives it to one end of the field, where the hay is piled in large haystacks. Here come the cows. It's milking time, and all by themselves, they start walking toward the barn. The cows know when it's time to be milked, and twice a day, once in the early morning, and once in the afternoon, they go to the barn to be milked.
Each cow has her own stall, and she walks into the same stall every day. As soon as she is inside, the yoke must be closed. The yoke is an iron frame that fits around the cow's neck to keep her from walking away. But it doesn't keep her from eating. Yes, even inside the barn, the cows eat and drink all the time. Each cow has her own drinking fountain. Well, what's this? Why, it's Buster the cat. Buster saw this empty stall and decided to take a nap. Doesn't he look comfortable? Everything in the barn must be kept very clean so that no germs can get into the milk. Walter sprays the cows to keep the flies away because flies carry germs and germs cause disease. While Walter does the spraying, Uncle George carefully washes the cow's udder. Now everything is ready. Uncle George places a shiny, clean milk pail between his knees and begins the milking. He squeezes first one teat and then another. The udder has four teats from which the milk is drawn. Each cow gives about 15 quarts of milk a day. When all the cows are milked, they'll be turned out into the pasture again. Would you like to milk a cow, Judy? You'll have to wash your hands first. Remember, everything must be very, very clean when we milk cows. Judy is going to milk good old Florabelle. Florabelle is a gentle black and white cow who doesn't mind having a little girl milk her. Judy thinks this is great fun. Soon the milk pail is full. Now it must be taken to the milk room. Here the milk is poured through a cloth strainer into a large can. It takes several pails of milk. As soon as the can is full, it is placed in the cooler. The milk must be kept cool to keep it from turning sour. Early the next morning, long after Judy and her mother have gone home, Uncle George takes the cans of milk from the cooler and puts them on his truck. When the truck is loaded, he'll drive to the bottling plant, where the milk is pasteurized and put into bottles. And soon afterward, our old friend the milkman delivers the bottles of cool, fresh milk on the front doorstep. Now, whenever Judy drinks milk, she remembers Laura Bell, the black and white cow that she milked all by herself at Uncle George's farm.